today's video, we're going to discuss a timeless bag, the tote. We're going to break this video up into three chapters. First, we're going to look at the history of the tote bag from its original utilitarian use to its rise in the fashion industry, and now it's commonplace in eco-friendly grocery shopping. Then I'm going to share some of my favorite tote bags and discuss how I use each of them. Lastly, we'll end with a what's in my bag jazz vinyl edition. I've been getting a lot of comments on the relaxing music I use in my videos, so I wanted to show off a few of the albums from my collection that have that same kind of vibe as the stock music I use. If you're new to this channel, thanks for being here. I make relaxing minimalist packing videos, so if this is your kind of thing, please be sure to like and subscribe. All right, let's get started. Groceries, records, everyday carry. Totes have been a versatile staple in the bag world for what seems like forever. While iterations of the tote bag have been around for centuries, many credit L.L. Bean with inventing the first tote in 1944. This first tote, like many bags, was not created as a fashion statement, but out of necessity. Originally called the Ice Carrier, L.L. Bean's original tote was made with a durable, water-resistant canvas to carry ice from the car to the ice chest, hence the name. In the 40s and 50s, many households only had small frost line freezers that required the use of a block of ice in a separate ice chest. People would buy large blocks of ice from a distributor and then transport them back to their homes. The tote bags were made with canvas specifically to keep the melted water in place during transportation so that it wouldn't spill in the car. As refrigerators started to become more commonplace in U.S. homes throughout the late 50s, the use of the tote bag began to shift. People started carrying groceries and personal belongings. The bags became more of an everyday use item, and the fashion industry capitalized. In 1965, L.L. Bean reimagined their ice carrier, adding color to the design and creating what we still know to this day as the boat and tote. This is American designer Bonnie Cashin. Cashin was a pioneer in the fashion industry. She was credited with creating the term in the act of layering clothes, as well as creating sportswear. This is her cash and carry bag. She created this for the brand Coach in 1962. That collaboration would keep on going, and in 1969, we were first introduced to the cash and bag, or the cash and tote. This is the bag that blew up the fashion world. It became the it item of the late 60s. In the year 1980, at the now nearly 100-year-old New York City bookstore, The Strand, the shape and style synonymous with the tote bag of today was first popularized. It started out as a simple design, and it was created by the bookstore floor manager. The tote had the name of the bookstore, the address, and the phone number, all spelled out in block letters. Very simple. Today, though, there's hundreds of designs available in the store. Over the past 40 plus years, brands and stores alike have created walking advertisements with these budget-friendly bags. Bags like these from The New Yorker make a statement, acting as a status symbol for pseudo-intellectuals. Or these bags from Outdoor Voices that seem to be popping up on every street corner in Chicago. Whether you want to show off your interests, make a statement, display your fashion sense, or demonstrate your brand loyalty, nowadays there's a tote bag for you. As shifts in climate become more apparent, so do the impacts of single-use bags on the environment. Today, the tote bag is being utilized as a way to help combat those impacts. Reusable bags are being offered now at all major grocery stores in many different sizes and shapes. In major cities like Chicago, we now pay a seven cent tax for every one of those single-use bags we use. So bringing your tote bag for groceries will not only help with the environmental impacts, but it'll also save you some cash. Now I want to show off a couple of my tote bags that I use the most. This first bag is from Bagu, and it is the one I use for everyday carry. It's called the duck bag, and it measures right around 16 by 11 by 5. It's made from a cotton canvas and is simple, yet durable. It also features this adjustable strap. I find this really useful when carrying this bag throughout the day and on my commute. Next, let's take a look at my go-to bag for grocery shopping. This is the canvas shop bag from Timbuktu. This bag is larger than your standard tote, coming at close to 17 by 15 by five, and it actually holds 20 liters. 
It's the perfect bag for quick trips down the street to the grocery store when I just need to pick up a handful of things. It's really well made and sturdy, and I also love the zipper pocket on the inside where I can keep my wallet, keys, and phone while shopping. Lastly, let's take a look at a few of my record totes. All three of these bags come from record stores I visited during the summer of 2022 when my wife and I went to Europe. For me, record store tote bags are a great souvenir when vacationing. They are easy to transport back, and if you're bringing home additional items from your trip, just fill up the bag and bring it with you. The first two bags I have here are from London-based record stores, Rough Trade and Sister Ray. Rough Trade has a rich history, starting first as a record store and then branching off into a label. Today, it's one of the biggest independent record labels, and over the years has had everyone from the Smiths to the Strokes on their roster. Sister Ray is located in the popular Soho area of London. Named after the Velvet Underground song, this store has been operating since 1989 and is one of the best stores I've had the pleasure of visiting over the years. Lastly, we have a bag from Amsterdam's Velvet Music. I stumbled upon this store as we were walking around Amsterdam, and I'm so happy to have found it. They have a really great selection, and it's such a wonderful digging experience inside the store. Finally, I just wanted to quickly share a few jazz albums that you may enjoy if you like the background music I use in my videos. I've been getting a lot of comments recently about the stock music I use, and I just wanted to share a couple of picks from my collection. First, we have a record from Dick Hyman called Dick Hyman and His Trio. This album is from the Command label, which was a jazz label from the 60s aimed at audiophile listeners. Hyman is most famous from his many film scores, but his career is extremely varied. In addition to more traditional jazz that you'll find on this album, he also made some really interesting albums using the Moog synthesizer. Next is a record by Dave Brubeck Quartet called Jazz Goes to College. Released in 1954, this album was recorded during a tour in which the quartet played concerts at universities throughout the United States. The touring schedule was pretty brutal back then, with the band playing up to 90 colleges in just a four-month period. This album was wildly successful in the 50s, especially among college students. And lastly, we have an album that's been credited to both Freddie Hubbard and Curtis Fuller separately. But here it's listed as both of them, as well as Yusuf Latif, and it's called Getting It Together. This hard bop album was released in 1961. I really like it because songs like Flute add a spiritual jazz element to the music. And that's going to be it for this week's video. Comment below with some of your favorite tote bags from your collection and any relaxing jazz albums that you may be enjoying right now. See you in the next video.